Hello, and thank you for your interest in the 2025 ACLS Open Access Book Prizes generously supported by Arcadia. My name is Sarah McKee, and I'm the project manager for Amplifying Humanistic Scholarship at ACLS, a consortium of 81 academic societies. This information session provides a brief overview of the book prize structure, as well as a close look at the submission process. But first, a little background. For more than 100 years, ACLS has supported humanistic scholarship through its grant and fellowship programs, which provide funding to individual scholars at all levels, from graduate students to senior faculty across a wide array of disciplines. But in recent years, ACLS has begun to explore other ways to support the humanistic community by using its connections to various constituencies, including scholarly societies, our ACLS fellows and grantees, humanities deans, and organizational affiliates, which include publishing and library groups, to launch new initiatives that foster conversations and accelerate institutional change. Amplifying Humanistic Scholarship launched in 2023 and engages with the changing landscape of publishing as a critical part of the humanities infrastructure. We've taken a particular interest in open access publishing as one way to expand the reach of humanistic research and demonstrate its relevance. The Open Access Book Prizes is one of several programs we've launched in this area over the last year and a half. We also collaborate with JSTOR on the Path to Open program and with Brown University, Emory University, and the Association of University Presses on the Adventures in Digital Publishing web series. The Open Access Book Prizes seek to recognize and reward the authors and publishers of exceptional, innovative, and open humanity scholarship over the course of a three-year pilot period. We hope that the prizes will help to raise the profile and the prestige of open access publishing among humanistic scholars, and as a result, encourage more scholarly presses to invest in open access publishing. This is our second year of the competition. This past May, we awarded the inaugural prizes in two categories, history and multimodal, and we'll be accepting submissions in both of these categories again for the 2025 prizes. We've also added two new prize categories, environmental humanities and literary studies. Eligible works in all categories must be open access monographs published from 2018 to 2023. We encourage you to look at the winners and finalists in the history and multimodal categories from last year. Full information, including links to the projects and to interviews with the authors, can be found at the URL on this slide. Eligible submissions for the history category include historical examinations of all eras, geographical regions, peoples, and or cultural developments through any theoretical lens. The 2024 winner in this category is Freedom Seekers, Escaping from Slavery in Restoration London by Simon P. Newman. It was published in 2022 by the University of London Press. Eligible works in the multimodal category may come from any humanistic discipline. These books include digital content or affordances that are not possible in a print edition. Competitive works will demonstrate effective and innovative use of the online environment and must contain the entirety of the monograph's text. So in other words, uh, we don't accept a companion website as a uh, corollary to a separate print edition. So these works might take the form of an enhanced ebook, which includes digital components not available in the print edition, or they might take the form of an entirely born digital interactive work that does not have a print edition at all. The 2024 winner in this category is As I Remember It, Teaching from the Life of a Slime and Elder by Elsie Paul with Davis McKenzie, Paige Raven, and Harmony Johnson. It was published on the Ravenspace platform in 2019 by the University of British Columbia Press. And finally, our two new categories for 2025 are Environmental Humanities and Literary Studies. Like the multimodal category, the Environmental Humanities category is interdisciplinary. Eligible works include humanistic examinations of environmental issues, including but not limited to climate change, biodiversity, conservation, and environmental justice. And our fourth category for 2025 is Literary Studies. Eligible works include studies of language, literature, and media from all eras, cultures, and locales through any theoretical lens. 
A quick word here about what we mean by open access monograph. First, we define monograph as a distinct genre that offers a long form scholarly argument on a single subject in the humanities or interpretive social sciences. So edited collections, anthologies, critical editions, textbooks, and creative works are not currently eligible for the prize. Co-authored works and translations are eligible, although all submissions must be published in English between 2018 and 2023. Open access is defined here as a digital work freely available to anyone anywhere in the world with internet access. Eligible submissions must have been published as immediate open access, meaning that the open edition was made simultaneously available with any other print or ebook editions. They must be free of all digital rights management, and we also require that they be distributed on at least two platforms, which may include the publishers and or authors websites. The idea here is that we want to encourage publishers to make their open access books visible and easy to discover for people both inside and outside academia. The winning title in each category receives dual awards. Authors receive the $20,000 ACLS Open Access Book Prize, and publishers of the winning titles receive the Arcadia Open Access Publishing Award in the amount of $30,000, which is a grant to support forthcoming books that would not otherwise be published open access. The prizes will be announced at the ACLS annual meeting scheduled for April 24 through 26 in Cambridge, Massachusetts. And here's a quick look at the full competition timeline. The submission period is open now and runs through Tuesday, September 10th. The evaluation process will take place during the fall with a short list of five finalists announced in each category by the end of the year. Winners will be notified in early 2025. And as noted earlier, the public announcement of winners will be made at the ACLS annual meeting in April. During the evaluation process, the judges will consider not only evidence for rigorous and impactful scholarship, but will also give attention to how the open access editions were produced and distributed. In the multimodal category, we also look closely at the design choices and preservation plan for the enhanced or interactive edition. This competition seeks to reward and encourage publishing practices that maximize opportunities for accessibility and truly benefit authors and readers. These considerations are reflected in the questions on the entry form. Judges for the prizes include scholars in the relevant disciplines, as well as specialists in scholarly communications, digital accessibility, and digital humanities. So for all the categories, we are looking for original and compelling intellectual contribution to the field or discipline, demonstrable impact to the wider scholarly conversation and or to non-academic audiences through positive reviews, conventional or social media attention, prizes or other commendations and or course adoptions, and evidence of good faith efforts by the publisher to make the work widely accessible through inclusive design and technology choices, as well as robust distribution and marketing strategies. And then criteria specific to the multimodal category include, innovative and judicious use of digital affordances that serve to advance the work's core argument or narrative, intuitive navigation and seamless integration of text and digital content, and attention to preservation concerns. So how do you apply? First, the good news is there's no entry fee, but I will say that our entry form is somewhat more detailed than the average book competition. And one of the reasons for that is we're actively trying to learn about open access publishing and to help promote practices that contribute to healthy humanistic scholarship. One thing that's different this year is that the entry form contains a section to be completed by authors, but just like last year, authors may not independently submit entries. We've provided a fillable author response form on the website that publishers can use to collect information from their authors, which can then be pasted into the online entry form. But again, only publishers may submit the official entry form. We also limit the number of entries per publisher in each category. So each publisher or distinct imprint may submit up to three titles in each category for a maximum total of 12 entries from any single publisher. So for the full eligibility guidelines and the entry form, you'll navigate to our competition page, which is at the URL on the slide. So here we are on the competition page. 
Uh, and here is the apply button at the top of the page. Um, note that you can't save your work on the form for later. It must be completed in one sitting. Um, so we provided a sample PDF of the questions at the bottom of the competition page. So if you scroll down, you'll see this section here on uh, supporting documents. Um, and that includes the sample entry form and also that author response form that I mentioned earlier. Um, and so you can use these forms to gather the necessary materials and craft your answers in advance. Okay, so when you're ready, you'll click on the apply button and this brings you to the live entry form. The entry form is divided into four categories. The first two are very straightforward sections to gather information about the book and the publisher. The next two sections, scholarly impact, here and access and accessibility are more subjective. Here we ask a brief series of open-ended questions that reflect our interest in the quality of the scholarship as well as the way in which it was made open. We understand that open access publishing comes with challenges and investments as well as a learning curve, and we're curious to learn more about the procedures publishers are developing for open access books. So we're not being overly prescriptive in our requirements at this stage, but we are highlighting some issues and practices that we see as important for the health of open scholarship. And as previously noted, our reviewers and judges will give these issues some attention and consideration as part of the evaluation process. The final section allows us to hear directly from authors. We're including this new section at the request of last year's reviewers who wanted to understand more about the author's perspective on the work itself, as well as on their experiences in publishing open access. I hope this overview has been helpful and that you are ready to submit. Please reach out to me anytime with questions and follow us on LinkedIn for updates on the competition. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing your entries.